What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Outdoor Chef Life. I'm Taku. This is Jocelyn. And today we are with our friends Sean. Hello. And T. We're on T's boat right now. And Sean has a YouTube channel too. It's called Opal Eye. Mm -hmm. uh, but you haven't posted in a while, right? Yeah, I was back in Korea and then just come back. Today we're doing a special type of fishing that you don't really see in the States. We are doing a type of fishing called ISO fishing, mm -hmm. which is done in Japan and Korea mainly. Yep. Uh, but Sean here has, he actually designed this rod, yeah, right? And it, the well, name of the rod is Flame. Yeah. Yeah, because many people ask me yeah. where they can find this kind of rod. Yeah. But it's like impossible to find this rod. I get my rods from Korea, Korea and Japan. Yeah. Yep. So. Well, what I is what is it anyways? What's that? What's ISO fishing first of all? So, ISO means rock in Japanese. They usually fish from the rock by using this 18 feet rod. Because the rod is very long and elastic, you can catch bigger fish with a lower test line. So they catch yellow tails on 10 pound test line. Nice, so you can do like a lighter setup, lighter presentation. Yeah, so you then, get more bite. Yeah, but you can still you land can, them. Yeah, you can still land them. Nice. So you put your line through this small hole so instead of going through each of the guys you can just pull it through these are cool hooks right there's no eyes on them yep dude that's yeah that's so weird i still i don't know how to tie that but yeah they work better yeah yep that's so because cool if the line is in the front when you set your hook yeah they go like that hooks into them more so you basically have like a uh, bobber set up there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, cool. Yep. This is how there it is. Rod is. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's about <laughs> 17 feet long. 17 feet long. It goes all the way out there. You can't really tell with the GoPro, but uh, it's really long. <laughs> I got a little rod. Look at that. What is that? Five foot rod. I got 17 foot rod. So I'm going to be using that today. And then Sean's got another one. He's going to be using one over there. He's, he's set me up with this one. I'm going to try some peas for now. Go All right. Off. Thank you. This is not even braid line, huh, Sean? No, it's a nylon. Nylon line? Oh, oh, bite, bite. 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 Nope. Oh. Missed him. Let me try the peas again. Last time you said uh, you could catch yellowtail on peas too, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah, someone, oh, my friend caught a legal white sea bass. Oh, white sea bass on yeah, peas? On green peas. <laughs> Imagine if I did that. If I got a white sea bass or yellowtail on green peas. <laughs> There you go, Sean's got a fish. Yep. On green peas. Oh, opal eye. Opal eye. His favorite fish. <laughs> yeah, that's a big opal eye. It's a big size. Nice one. Oh, that's a bite. Yeah, that's a bite. Got him. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> So I've been using peas as bait and I haven't been able to stick any fish on it. Uh, I'm gonna switch to shrimp and give that a go. Why do you use the nylon um, line? Oh, because if you use braid, yeah. it absorbs water, mm -hmm. so it sinks. Oh, then it's gonna pull your hook away from the bottle. Oh, I see. Oh, here we go. There we go. That's a fish. Oh. Oh, you feel like a 10 pounder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, now it feels like a 10 pounder right here. <laughs> feels big on this rod. Let's see. 
Oh, it's it's a sheep head, I think. Yeah, I think it's a sheep. It's a little, it's a close. Yeah, it's gotta be 12 inches. Yeah. I think it's 13. Oh yeah, 13 and a half. Got a live well going. Oh. Ooh. That's big. You got a big one? There you go, Sean. With Never the... mind. No? I thought he was big. Felt big at first. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good sign. Oh, I'm on too. The great thing about sheep head is they all start as female, right? Yep. And then they, they, they turn female. They become I mean, they male. become male. It's so weird. And you can tell this one's a male because you got the black sun. Oh, you got a bite. Oh, oh, oh. Yep, yep. Oh, that's a good one. It's a sheep, sheep head again. Yeah, you can just lift the rod up. Nice. Great nice. job. Yeah. Now a little bit smaller than yours. This one looks like it just like became a male or something, huh? Yeah, it's turning into It's color. turning into a male. Like they get the forehead. Whoa, what is going on? Oh, yeah, that's, that's a good one. Let him run, let him run. That's a, that's, that looks big. Whoa, that thing hit hard. Oh, I see him. Oh, wow. nice sheep head. <laughs> nice sheep head. Yeah, that's a grandpa. Wow. Nice, oh, can you really? Jocelyn, that thing is huge. Nice, good wow. job. Wow, that's a big one. She's always out fishing me. <laughs> Trigger fish. This one, they gotta be more. Yep, yep, yep. Oh wow, it's pretty oh, big. Lion, sea lion. Sea sea lion. Oh, no. Okay. There it is. There it is. Come here. Come here. Oh, oh nice. No. That is nice. Nice. <laughs> that wow, is that's trigger a fish. Huge trigger fish. Look at yep. the size. Yeah, look at their oh, teeth. Oh look my at the teeth. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that's wow. Okay, Dang, we found one. I call the trigger fish because if you push this horn, it never goes down. But this is the trigger. If you touch the second one, it goes down automatically. <laughs> yeah. That's why it's a trigger fish. Right. Oh, let's okay, cook so this wrong. guy. We're gonna take a little break. There's no more chopstick you will have to eat. <laughs> so now we're gonna make some lunch. I brought uh, some ingredients to make some ceviche, and uh, we're gonna try out this trigger fish for ceviche. I think it's gonna be good. I've had trigger fish before and I've prepared trigger fish before uh, in some sushi restaurants, but uh, they were much smaller than this. And they, I remember them being a pain to prepare because their skin is so rough. But let's give this one a shot and see how it goes. So we have already bonked and bled him. As you can see, I cut, his, cut into his gill right in there. It can barely get into his gills. But that's that's it there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just score the skin on all sides, and then I'm gonna try to peel it. So I'm gonna start up here. Oh my gosh! Oh. Look how look I have a sharp knife and it's nothing, nothing. Jeez. So then, now I can peel that off there. If I poke a hole, it should be easier for me to grip. And I should be able to pull this guy off.
I don't know. These guys are a pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> This thing you need to cut it out and crack it, otherwise more difficult. Oh, cut it right here? Yeah, cut it right here and then you crack like a, like a joint, you know? Oh, snap. Yeah. See how tough that this thing is? I think you have to take the skin out with a little more easy. To... There you go. Nice. Yeah, these fish are so weird. They're uh, built just different. Mm -hmm. He says the liver is good too. Looks like a zombie. All right, well, let's now fillet. Filleting should be more simple. I'm gonna start at the bottom here. As usual, go to the center bone. I'm gonna go do I'm gonna do the back as well. Into the center bone. Let's see, let's lift up. And I'm just gonna take this fillet off. Look at that. The meat is really, looks really nice. Look at that, it's so clear, translucent. It's almost like, a, looks kind of like fugu meat, like <laughs> blowfish. It's kind of how, how it is, very clear. I want to try it just like this, by itself. It's really firm. Pretty mild, no binding. It's good, good meat right there. All right, we'll let the we'll let the lobsters have the rest. It's boneless. That's boneless. These are boneless. 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 All right. Take this one out. All right. Cool. Now I just cut it into ceviche sized chunks. All right, just small cubes. Look how firm it is. You can tell how firm it is by like how much it like kind of stands. A lot of people oftentimes ask me what fish you can eat raw or what fish you can't eat raw. And uh, sometimes that does depend on species. Um, some species are more prone to parasites than others, but in this case, um, the first thing you want to ask is, is it saltwater fish or is it freshwater fish? Freshwater fish, you never want to eat raw. So if it's freshwater, that's out of the picture. So don't eat that raw. You got, you got another trigger fish. Nice. Nice. Good one, good one. Good, nice. Sweet. Okay, so with the freshwater fish, the reason why you can't eat them because it's, there's bacteria in fresh water, right? A lot more bacteria than in salt water. So that's why uh, like you wouldn't drink fresh water without boiling it. You wouldn't eat it. Don't eat it without cooking it. So with salt water, you can eat salt water fish raw. You can't eat all salt water fish raw uh, because of the parasites. And myself, I've been working with, you know, um, salt water fish for, for a while now several years so i know what to look for so um if you're not trained or you know just be careful that uh because if you do eat parasites which which are common in fish and they ruin your day or your week it most likely won't kill you so if you do eat any fish raw and if i've influenced you to you know try raw fish do it at your own risk because there is always a risk in eating things raw, all right?
That's a good thing we cooked some chicken. I'm using this top ramen uh, bowl here. We're just shy, we're low on bowls. I have this one though. So once I make it, I'll put it in here. But for now, I'm gonna marinate the fish in lime. Cause we're making ceviche. Kimchi ceviche. Kimchi, a little kimchi flavor. That'll be tasty, yeah. We got some garden tomatoes. I'll slice all these up. We also have this garden habanero that Jocelyn grew. Very spicy, very good. And we have cilantro, avocado, red onion. We're gonna chop all that up, throw it in a bowl, mix it with the fish, and we have our ceviche, and we're gonna throw it on the tostada as well. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry about the ramen bowl. <laughs> but you can see it's starting to cook the outside of the fish. And if you're wondering if it did have parasites and if, can you cook it with acid? Uh, technically, I no, I don't think so. So if it if it had parasites, you would have to cook the fish. Fish are still edible, even if they do have parasites. You just have to cook it with heat, not with acid. You can remove your parasites too. Right? Yeah, you can. You can remove your parasites too and uh, it'll be completely edible. Just because you see one parasite doesn't mean the whole fish is bad. Uh, you can com still eat other parts of the fish raw even if there are, but sure, if it's, it's more risky, we'll do it. We'll leave it in there for another five minutes or so and we'll just combine everything together. Um, I forgot salt and pepper also. Forgot a lot of things this morning. I woke up at five. That's really good. Um, yeah, woke up real early, but salt and pepper, you know, when we go in there, even though we don't have salt, it's actually pretty salty because I've been washing everything in the salt water. So we should have enough salt content that it's still going to taste really good. Oh, it's getting a little seasoning from the ramen. Oh, it's a little full. It's a little full. Probably stir it first and then add it in. It's alright. Jocelyn approve? Yeah, it smells really good. It does smell really good. Cilantro, the lime. Yeah. Smell the spice. Yeah. The habanero. I'm a little scared of the habaneros. <laughs> very... Sean said he might just try a little bit. Like I was saying earlier, he doesn't really um, doesn't eat seafood, but he's a he's a big fisherman. <laughs> so I just make a little little piece for him like that. <laughs> And we'll top these. You guys want a beer? No, uh, no, I'm good. No? Cheers. Yeah, it's really good with the tomato and lime. Cheers. Anytime. <laughs> Anytime you, you come by, yeah. Yeah. Thank call you. me or we go fish. I don't know what any fish you want to catch, but <laughs> I'm all out here anyway. All right, awesome. <laughs> That's delicious. Well, Thank you guys for watching another episode and I'll finish this up. See you on the next one. Peace. If you guys are interested in these uh, ESO fishing rods, the, the ones that we were using today. So Sean actually makes these and he has them on his website. So you guys can go check him out. I'll leave a link in the description below. If you're interested in ESO fishing, I have all the accessories, poppers and everything. So please let me know. Thank you.